Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, how men can overcome the fear of intimacy. Now, really quickly, before we get started, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also, if at any time this video resonates with you, please hit that like button. And lastly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery, where I answer your, your personal questions directly through video. So check out the link below to my VIP group. Okay, we're gonna talk about how men can overcome the fear of intimacy. And if you've been following my channel lately, I've been talking quite a bit about men who fear intimacy. They fear going deeper into the relationship. And now many of you might be confused because men oftentimes come on strong and they seem to be totally into you and then all of a sudden shift. And you might be asking, why does this happen? Well, the thing is when human beings, human beings, men and women alike seek connection and they seek physical intimacy and emotional intimacy as well. Not everybody, but most people seek intimacy of some sort. Most men tend to be more physical, women tend to be more emotional, and we seek connection. The reality is, is a relationship requires going much deeper beyond the surface. And what happens is when it reaches a certain point, that might be the capacity a human being may be able to go deeper into a relationship, to build the roots of a strongly, um, well, strongly rooted relationship, you know, building something together. So why does this happen? Why does this happen? And how can a man overcome this fear of intimacy? Well, I want to use a story from a movie called Officer and a Gentleman. Officer and a Gentleman. And I'm not sure if you've seen it, but if you haven't, I'll give you the quick rundown of it. It stars uh, Richard Gere and Deborah Winger. Uh, he's called Mac, uh, Zach Mayo. She's called Paula. And what happens is he's a... Um, he wants to become a naval pilot and he goes to training and during his training he meets this woman they begin a casual relationship and she and he basically tells her this is a casual relationship up front now what we don't see you know and what happens is their relation progresses and then he reaches a certain point where he ends the relationship okay now why does this happen or why did this happen in this particular case well when you actually see the backstory in the beginning of the movie we found out that Zach wasn't raised by his mother he was raised in a foreign country he was a I think he was a naval brat <laughs> I think that's what they call him and so he had a lot of trauma growing up and abandonment growing up. So this is what was the initial cause of his fear of intimacy. Now in the movie, you know, at the end of the movie, he gets the girl and everybody is happy. And you've got to ask yourself, well, what happened? Well, there was a humbling moment in his life. There was a humbling moment in his life where his best friend killed himself. And in that moment, he recognized what's really important to him and he overcame his fear of intimacy and then was able to lean into the relationship. Now, sounds great in a movie. Great in a movie. You know, Jonathan, all does it take is a humbling event for someone to change their fear of intimacy? Well, like I said, sounds great in a movie, but in real life it takes a lot more than that. And I, and I know this because I'm about to share my own personal story of what happened in my own life, and this might give you some real context of what happens in the dating, mating, and relating realm. And if you follow my work, my specialty is midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement. So the vast majority of people that I talk to are those that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, okay? Now, that demographic, roughly about 75% of people who are in singlehood seeking some sort of connection with another human being is divorced. And divorce comes with it a significant amount of, or can come with a significant amount of trauma. So when I think back to when I went through my divorce, what happened is when my, when my now ex-wife, um, and I decided to split up. I had lost my quarter million dollar a year job. I then um, got wiped out in the market crash 
of 2008. And I once had a seven-figure net worth. I used to live in a $2.2 million home. And I was absolutely depressed. I was drinking. I was doing cocaine. I was a train wreck. And I was serial dating all that time. I was feeding my, I was self-medicating through the dating process of just connecting with people. And then the minute I connected with someone, I'd run away and I'd connect with another person. And then I'd run away and I'd connect with another person. And I ran away. And this happened over and over and over again. And quite frankly, at the time, I was completely unconscious to what was going on to me. I wasn't aware that I had a fear of intimacy. I wasn't aware that I was actually being inconsiderate to people. This is why when a lot of you write comments on the post saying, well, why do people even date if they're not even ready? Well, the thing is, I thought I was ready. I fooled myself to believing I was ready. And I had all of these experiences happening. These were all of my humbling events, humbling events. I had one after another after another, but that didn't change me. It required doing this one thing to be able to shift and overcome my fear of intimacy. And that was to do the inner work, to do the inner work to look inward and say, what was the cause of all of this and how can I heal from it? I'm gonna repeat that, what was the cause of this and how do I heal from it? Now, I'm gonna tell you something. That took a lot of brain power to even recognize that happened. Let me repeat that, that took a lot of brain power to recognize that happened. I use the term brain power and what I'm really saying is I finally when I stopped pointing the finger at other people and I saw these three fingers pointing back at me, I realized I was the common denominator of every single one of my problems. And when I came to that conclusion, I go, well, what can I do to work on this? Now, if you're not familiar, I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? There's a link below uh, to get my book, uh, Self-Love the Book. Why I'm sharing this with you is my book is the journey of my personal development, self-help, and spiritual work to get to where I'm at today. And by the way, that included therapy, that included over 3,000 hours of personal development workshops and trainings and books and videos. I've been doing a deep dive into healing what was causing much of the frustration and angst in my life. So what I'm here to say is for someone to actually, men or women alike, to overcome their fear of intimacy, to overcome their fears in life, emotional fears in life, first you have to recognize that you have a problem. You have to recognize that you have a problem. You have to recognize that you are the contributor to everything in your life. You are the contributor to everything in your life. So first I had to recognize that. And then, it's, then I had to ask myself, well, how am I going to heal from this? How am I going to overcome this? How am I going to move past this? And it was through all the books and readings and learning. And one of my favorite books, and I invite you all to purchase this, please, 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 by this book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Please, by the way, there's a link to Jonathan Recommends books below. Oh, uh, really quickly, my t-shirt says, I've got your back. So you can see this person's missing a back and this person's holding the back. And my coffee mug today says, stay grounded, stay grounded. So I hope for you, you stay grounded. I'm here to say though, how do we overcome the fear of intimacy? It requires doing this thing, <laughs> do this thing. <laughs> and it requires awareness and then stepping into the healing process. Now, here's the challenge. Many of you have experienced men who come on strong, they hit their wall, you know, they hit their fear of intimacy, and then they run away, and then they ask for you back, okay? It's like six weeks later, 12 weeks later. Some people call it the rubber band effect, that once they realize that you've left, you're, there, you're gone, they miss you and they want you back. But here's the challenge with that. What have they done in that time in between to heal what caused them to run away, to ghost, to disappear, to take space? If they, it's missing a person is not loving a person. Let me repeat that. Missing a person is not loving a person. When you miss someone, that's not love. When you want someone back because you're missing them, 
That's just trying to fill the void. Like, by the way, that's trying to fill the void. You know, you know that whole line from the movie Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Well, that's just codependency reaching in saying, I'm, I'm lonely and I need someone to come. I, you know, I want you back because I'm not feeling happy about myself. This is why I'm coming back to the idea of self-love, which is really another term for self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem, self-reliance. That's what self-love is. It requires doing the inner work to actually prepare to lean into a relationship. So by the way, for all these men that come back and want you back, it's great for about a week, a two weeks, three weeks, but all the patterns that caused a lot of that frustration, angst in the relationship. And let me just share this with you. Most likely, when a guy reaches his point of fear of intimacy, there were clues along the way, you just didn't pick up on it. He's going through a nasty divorce. He's got issues at work. He has health issues. He has maybe family issues, whether it's his parents, maybe it's his children. There's some sort of chaos going on in his life. He might have gotten wiped out financially like I did. By the way, that totally affected my self-esteem in the area of being a provider protector. So then I had these conflicting things going on in my life. You know, I, I, I've got the instinct of being a provider protector, but I got wiped out financially. What, and then I was feeling shame around that. What woman would want me if I can't be there, her provider protector? And a lot, by the way, this is one of the most common reasons why men fear intimacy today is the whole notion of being the provider protector, especially here in the United States when less than 80% of people make $100,000 a year. The vast majority of people barely have three months savings in the bank. So, so why I'm sharing this with you is we might have this instinct to be a provider protector, but an absolute fear that's stopping us from doing that because we may not have the resources to do it. And these are opposing forces going on, which causes someone to might lean into connection and sex, but it doesn't, but they can't go any further. And I'm just giving you one example of where these conflicting forces come into play. Ultimately, for a man or woman to overcome their fear of intimacy, their fear of getting close to someone, it's going to require facing that fear head on. Facing that fear head on. <laughs> I'm doing it like this, okay? Head on. And without awareness and without doing the inner work, it's going to be very challenging for anyone to lean into deeper intimacy. And again, that doesn't mean you can't have a casual relationship with someone if you want something deeper, then it requires someone to be in a safe space to do that. And what I mean to say, it requires both people to be in a safe space, to lean into intimacy. And sadly, most pe people are leaning away from intimacy because they're not aware of it and they haven't done the work. And that's how a guy can overcome the fear of intimacy, or a woman as well. All right, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. Let me know what you think of my shirt and my coffee mug. Um, I do my best to read everything and the questions. Again, if you want to join my group, check out the link to Midlife Love Mastery. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug. I'm going to ask you to turn to a friend, a pet, a teddy bear, <laughs> or a pillow and give it and them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.